Imagine your body like a kitchen that never stops cooking, pots boiling, pans sizzling, burners always on, and you keep tossing in snacks the way people toss mail on a cluttered counter. Your stomach is that overworked dishwasher that never gets to finish a cycle before someone tosses in another dirty plate. Eventually the sink backs up, the counters overflow, and your energy starts feeling like a fridge light that flickers every time you open the door. That's not aging, it's overload. But imagine giving your whole kitchen a break with intermittent fasting, letting everything cool down long enough for a real cleanup. Today you'll see exactly what happens to you when 30 days of fasting finally let your body reset its timers, clear the mess, and run the way it was meant to. Over time, that non-stop kitchen inside you doesn't just get messy, it quietly wears down your hormones, especially insulin and cortisol. Science calls it metabolic fatigue, the slow burnout that happens when your body never gets a pause. That's why you feel bloated some days, wired on others, and strangely tired no matter what you eat. But intermittent fasting gives that whole system a reset, and the first few days reveal exactly how powerful that shift can be. Let's break down what happens inside you from day 1 to day 30. Hour 1 to 12, when your body realizes you broke the routine. The first 12 hours of intermittent fasting are basically your body looking around like, wait, did we skip a meal? Is everything okay at home? You've trained your stomach to expect food on a fixed schedule, the same way a dog magically appears every time you open a bag of chips. So when breakfast doesn't arrive, your hunger hormones, especially ghrelin, ring the doorbell just to check if something's wrong. Biologically, your blood sugar starts to dip and insulin begins to fall. This is completely normal. A study from the University of Michigan notes that your body's first job during fasting is simply using up the glucose already floating around in your bloodstream. It's housekeeping, not an emergency. But here's why you feel hungry. Your brain likes patterns. You usually eat at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m., so your body sends hunger signals even if you're not in real need of fuel. That stomach growl you hear? It's more like your internal calendar, protesting a schedule change, not an actual crisis. Most people in this window feel a bit distracted, maybe a little cranky, and suddenly hyper-aware of every food commercial on TV. But physically, nothing is going wrong. These hours simply show you how much of your hunger is habit, not necessity. Hour 12 to 18. The glycogen fridge is getting empty. You hit hour 12, things get more interesting. Your liver holds your emergency sugar storage, called glycogen. Think of it as the little food drawer you forget about until there's nothing else in the fridge. Harvard research estimates that the liver stores about 100 to 120 grams of glycogen, enough to fuel you for half a day. When that supply begins to run low, your body realizes it has to look for another energy source. And trust me, it doesn't want to. Glucose is the easy, lazy fuel. Switching to fat is like asking your metabolism to do actual housework. So during hours 12 to 18, you might feel slightly tired, foggy, or even cold. That is your metabolism walking around the kitchen, opening empty cabinets, hoping snacks magically appear. Cravings peak here, not because you're starving, but because your dopamine system is used to little food rewards. Every time you ate just because, your brain got a tiny hit of pleasure. Now, without that hit, it starts asking questions. The good news? This phase is short, and the moment your body accepts that no new food is coming, a switch flips. Hour 18 to 24, the fat-burning switch finally turns on. This is the moment people talk about when they rave about fasting. Around hour 18, your glycogen tank becomes low enough that your body must unlock its fat reserves. This process, called lipolysis, breaks down stored fat into fatty acids, which then get converted into ketones. Ketones are like your body's premium fuel, clean, steady, and surprisingly efficient. NIH studies show that ketone levels start rising sharply between hours 18 and 24. This is when people start saying, okay, 
I f actually feel weirdly good. Ketones provide stable energy to the brain, so instead of the roller coaster highs and crashes from carbs, you get a smooth, steady hum of mental clarity. Some people feel lighter and some feel focused. Others say the hunger surprisingly disappears. This is because ketones naturally suppress appetite. Your body finally realizes, wait, we have plenty of stored fuel. Why were we panicking earlier? Inflammation also starts decreasing during this window. Research and metabolism shows that fasting gives your immune system a break, allowing it to shift from constant digestion towards cellular repair. Even your insulin sensitivity begins improving, meaning your next meal will be used more efficiently instead of instantly turned into fat. Emotionally, many people hit a small reset here. Without constant food drew dopamine spikes, your brain settles into a calmer rhythm. It's like your mind finally gets some peace and quiet after years of background noise. By the time you reach hour 24, your body is no longer asking for snacks. It's rediscovering a survival skill humans relied on for thousands of years. You've officially entered the metabolic state your ancestors lived in whenever food was scarce, using fat as steady, reliable fuel. Day 2-7 to seven. The Adaptation Week Day 2 is where fasting stops feeling like a fun idea and starts feeling real. Your body is still adjusting, and your hunger hormones, especially ghrelin, are firing at their usual schedule. But here's the good part. Research in obesity reviews shows these hunger waves weaken fast, usually within 48 to 72 hours. What feels like intense cravings now is mostly routine, not real need. As insulin continues dropping, inflammation begins to ease. Many people notice reduced bloating, clearer skin, and fewer energy crashes. It's your body's way of saying thanks for not feeding me every two hours like a bored raccoon. By day three, your metabolism is finally getting the message. No more constant sugar refills. Fat becomes a primary fuel source, and ketone levels rise steadily. This is why people often report their first fasting high, a kind of mental brightness, like someone turned the contrast up in your brain. A University of Toronto study found that steady ketones support clearer focus and more stable mood. Day 4 and 5 bring another shift. Ghrelin stops yelling at you, your appetite drops, and you're surprised to discover your stomach is much quieter than before. Your digestion also calms down. With no food constantly entering, your gut finally gets a chance to rest, repair, and reduce inflammation. By day 6 and 7, the benefits become more noticeable. Your energy becomes smoother, not spiky. Your sleep may improve as your cortisol rhythm stabilizes. Many fasters say they wake up lighter, mentally and physically. You might even feel a strange sense of emotional clarity this happens because insulin and blood sugar swings, major drivers of mood changes, are finally stabilizing. This week also marks the beginning of mitochondrial upgrades. Studies in cell metabolism show fasting boosts mitochondrial efficiency, meaning your cells produce cleaner, steadier energy. You're not running on fumes, you're running smarter. Most importantly, the mental part shifts. Food stops controlling your day. Cravings lose their grip. You realize hunger comes in waves, not emergencies. And that alone builds a new kind of confidence. By the end of day seven, fasting is no longer something you force. It begins to feel like something your body actually understands. Your metabolism is calmer, your focus sharper, and your hunger far less dramatic. Week one doesn't just change how you eat. It changes how your body listens and how your mind responds. Week two to day 30. Week two is where fasting stops feeling like a challenge and starts feeling strangely logical. Your body has finally accepted that food isn't coming on demand, and instead of panicking, it begins running more efficiently, like a car that suddenly discovers it has an eco mode. Around day 8 to 10, autophagy ramps up. This is your body's built-in cleanup crew that removes damaged cells, misfolded proteins, and other microscopic junk that's been piling up like clutter in a forgotten closet. The process won the 2016 Nobel Prize, so no, this isn't internet health talk. It's real biology. Many people start noticing clearer skin, better digestion, and a lighter feeling in the body. It's your cells saying, finally, we can breathe. By day 11 to 14, something bigger shifts. 
inflammation drops. Studies in cell metabolism show that fasting reduces inflammatory markers, especially when insulin stays consistently low. In real life, this might show up as less joint stiffness, reduced bloating, or waking up without feeling like you slept inside a cement bag. Your energy becomes smoother. No roller coaster highs, no desperate afternoon crashes. This is also when many people notice their relationship with hunger changing. Instead of panic hunger, I need food right now or I will die, you will not. It becomes gentle, almost polite, more like, hey, if you have time, a snack would be nice. Relin, the hunger hormone, stops throwing tantrums. Dopamine cravings shrink. You no longer eat because you're bored, stressed, or procrastinating. You eat because you're actually hungry. By the middle of week two, your metabolism becomes metabolically flexible. This means your body switches between burning fat and glucose with ease, like a hybrid car shifting between battery and gas. Research from UC Berkeley confirms this flexibility protects against metabolic diseases and improves long-term energy stability. You're no longer trapped in the sugar dependence loop. Food stops controlling your mood, focus, and energy. You're driving the bus now. Around days 15 to 18, ketone production becomes more stable. Ketones aren't just fuel, they're signaling molecules that improve brain function. They support BDNF, a protein often called fertilizer for neurons. Many people describe this stage as feeling mentally lighter or weirdly calm. You may notice increased focus, fewer mood swings, and a general sense of emotional balance. It's not magic, it's chemistry finally working without interruption. By days 18 to 21, mitochondrial efficiency starts improving. These little powerhouses inside your cells become stronger and multiply. A study in the Journal of Clinical Investigation shows fasting triggers mitochondrial biogenesis, the creation of new mitochondria. The result? You feel like you have a more reliable energy supply. Not superhero energy, but the kind where you don't need three coffees to feel normal. During week three, your appetite resets. People often report they crave whole foods instead of ultra-processed snacks. Your taste buds sharpen. Sugary foods start to taste aggressively sweet, like someone dumped a cup of sugar into your mouth on purpose. That's because insulin sensitivity is improving, and your brain is finally getting accurate signals about what you need. By week four and heading toward day 30, fasting becomes less of a structure and more of a rhythm. Your hormonal patterns settle into a healthier balance. Cortisol becomes more stable, helping your sleep improve. Leptin, the hormone that tells you you're full, becomes more efficient, so overeating becomes harder. You stop eating past fullness because your body is better at signaling, we're good here. Around days 25 to 30, your metabolism reaches what many fasters call the new normal. Your energy feels stable throughout the day. Afternoon slumps fade. Your digestion is smoother. Cravings are quieter. Your brain feels clearer. Many report a surprising benefit, a sense of control around food, around choices, around their day. It's not the physical transformation that hits you first. It's the mental shift. Inflammation remains lower. Blood sugar stays steadier. Body composition may shift. Less fat around the midsection. More definition even if weight hasn't dramatically changed. Intermittent fasting isn't a crash diet. It's a slow, steady rewiring of how your body manages energy. By the time day 30 arrives, your body isn't just fasting better. It's functioning better. Your metabolism is calmer, your brain is sharper, your hunger is more honest, and food becomes something you choose, not something that controls you. You don't just finish 30 days of intermittent fasting. You arrive at a version of yourself that runs cleaner, thinks clearer, and eats with intention, not impulse. You've just seen what 30 days of intermittent fasting can do inside your body. Your energy becomes steadier, your mind sharper, and your hunger finally feels honest. This isn't about starving yourself, it's about letting your body work the way it was designed to. And now the choice is yours. You can go back to the old habits that drained you, or try a rhythm that actually supports you. So ask yourself, what would your next 30 days look like if you started today? If this video opened your eyes, drop a comment and tell me where you are in your fasting journey. Hit like, hit subscribe, and share this with someone who needs a fresh start. Your body is ready for the reset. Now it's your turn to follow through.